Kojak, a unique simulation program for safer, more economical and more transparent jackings. Nowadays, the new construction of supply and discharge lines in densely populated urban living space is only manageable by using trenchless technologies. Especially for larger cross-sections, usually pipe jacking is used. From a technical point of view, it's a challenging construction technique, which demands a great deal of the engineers, especially when it comes to the structural dimensioning of the pipeline. When using this method, a jacking station starting from a starting shaft drives jacking pipes through the subsoil towards a target shaft. Here, the configuration and the application of machine technology decisively influence the strain of the jacking pipes. The main jacking station installed inside the starting shaft introduces the forces necessary for jacking into the pipe string. The jacking station is supported by an abutment inside the starting shaft. Especially over larger jacking stretches, intermediate jacking stations are used in addition. They segment the pipe string and thus limit the longitudinal forces acting on the jacking pipes. The annular space between the jacking pipe and the subsoil, which is specifically created by the overcut of the jacking machine, is filled with a support and lubrication fluid. It supports the subsoil and lubricates the pipe string, thus reducing the necessary jacking forces. A steerable shield machine added to the front of the first pipe enables the jacking. Depending on the geological and hydrogeological preconditions, it's equipped with corresponding excavation tools for removing the soil at the working face. In the following, the impacts on the jacking pipes during jacking will be explained. The green arrow symbolizes the face resistance, creating a constant longitudinal force inside the pipe string. The jacking resistance, here marked yellow, is far more important. It's caused by the skin friction between the pipe and the subsoil and generates a continuously growing longitudinal force. Inevitably, longitudinal forces have to be added due to scheduled curved jackings and unavoidable steering movements. Too frequent or too strong steering movements can lead to an enormous growth of the longitudinal force and to impermissible pipe strain. To limit the longitudinal force inside the pipe string to the permissible value, intermediate jacking stations are installed. They reduce the number of pipes that have to be pushed by each jacking station. The pipe joints do not only transmit the longitudinal force from pipe to pipe, they also serve as a joint to allow steering and flexibility in curves. For this purpose, pressure transfer rings are used. They are either made of softwood or chipboard and arranged between the pipe faces. Their task is to distribute the longitudinal forces as evenly as possible to the end face of the pipe in order to minimize the pipe strain. Here, however, the wood is loaded so heavily that it's not only subject to elastic deformation, but also to plastic and thus constant deformations. The pressure trans